Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 18th of September and we're going to do an update on Bitcoin today. Uh, on top of that, we are going to look at the stock markets also, just because, as I've been saying for a good while now, there is a huge amount of correlation between the two assets. So that is what we're going to look at. As you, as you know, going through my previous videos, you'll know that I'm currently bearish on Bitcoin. I certainly maintain that stance. In today's video, we're going to go through all the bullish indicators here, as well as the bearish indicators here. And on top of that, we're going to look at the stock markets. And I'm going to justify my reasoning going through all of the analysis of correlating charts and all of the indicators that I use. So quickly, just looking at Bitcoin, as I say, we'll talk about the bullish and bearish factors. And on top of that, we'll then take a look, take a look at the NASDAQ. Uh, so NASDAQ, if we just pull everything off, go on the linear and pull up the weekly time frame, you can see very clearly we have gone literally vertical in this market, as well as on Apple and as well as on Amazon. OK, so we'll have a quick look through these markets and I'll show you how they're all looking like they could very well have topped. It's never that wise to go against the stock markets, but we are going through unprecedented times and I'm going to give my reasons for why I do think we could have topped here. So if interested, stay tuned. All right, guys, so first things first, let's pull up Bitcoin. Let's get back on the log scale. Let's bring back our annotations and go on the daily time frame. So uh, today's video, I think, is definitely necessary uh, just because we are going through what could be an absolutely monumental moment in stock market history. Um, and it could be the start of a huge trend here in Bitcoin. It really could. So as you know, I do have that bearish outlook. Reason being is we've broken some bullish bull trend parameters, uh, in particular on the stock markets. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a moment. But as you know, I've been looking at the larger WXY here on Bitcoin, this being our W, this being our X, and the Y coming down to here. So I explained that in detail on my last video. I won't go too much into the macroscopic outlook. What we will do is we'll talk a little bit about the shorter uh, time frame bit of price action round here so first of all not too long ago i was stating that we could go up to 16.5k here on bitcoin and that was invalidated when we want when we went beneath 11.1 that was my invalidation point for the bull trend uh, a lot of people who trade purely off market structure would no doubt be waiting for the lows round here to get overcome before switching bearish I was happy to switch my momentum all the way up here at 11.1. .1. And this is one of the useful things of using pitchforks to get a, an idea of trend. You get an early signal that we're losing momentum in, in one particular trend, which was the, to the upside here. OK, so quickly just to discuss the, the reasons for strength here. As I say, best case scenario would have been Bitcoin going to 16.5 because I have no doubt this is all corrective price action no doubt about it um, again check out my last video if you need further details on that but yeah best case scenario was to run into 16.5k and that was highly dependent on the nasdaq recovering which it certainly hasn't done uh, and we'll be taking a good look at nasdaq in a moment the other thing is at 10k we were hovering just above the 20 week sma we can quickly have a quick look at that one so pulling up our moving averages, let's take off the other annotations a moment. Let's go on the weekly. I have mentioned in the past the 50 week is particularly influential on um, on Bitcoin. But you can see right now the 20 week has been significant in the past. You can see back here. So the green line is our 20, by the way. The blue is our 50, red 100, black 200. And we're currently being held up by the 20 week SMA. OK, so some temporary support holding price up right here. OK. Bring you back our annotations. So another thing, there was a weekly doji. If we just bring on our doji here. So this is a quite a useful tool. It's relatively new, I believe. It uh, marks out the candlesticks here on TradingView. So there isn't too many dojis that it marks out in this bit of price action up here, but it does mark out this one. And 
you will find that dojis often represent levels of value and price will often gravitate to them and you'll often see a bit of support and resistance at those levels so this is our doji that it's marked out here in the weekly time frame and again it's offering a little bit of support albeit i see it as temporary support but certainly a bit of support nonetheless okay so there's our weekly doji another reason for support around this level we hit 9833 pretty much to the t of marked it out with this line here on the side so this is our 9833 line what is 9833 well it's exactly 50 percent of the move from zero to the all-time high at nineteen thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars okay so there is where we found a bit of support here it was nice resistance flipped to support as i say i see it as temporary support all right so just taking off the dojis now and uh, let's have a look at the other reasons for uh, this level being influential so 10k also uh, a nice psychological round number so another reason for a bit of a bounce at this point and looking across you can see resistance 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 and now needless to say you're not just going to break through it cleanly you're going to get a bit of a bounce before going lower okay last thing for a bit of big uh, bitcoin strength was the weekly r3 so this is using our camera pivots pulling up the camera pivots so it's the S3, not the R3. Um, so, no, sorry, it was the, we're on the weekly here. So yes, the R3 is holding price up right now. So this is our R3, just about holding price right now. And you can see how influential these levels are. You can see the R4 acting as resistance. You can see the S3 as support, R3 resistance here, R3 resistance. And it's currently acting as a bit of support. So these are all the bull, st um, the the strength indicators here. And then going, if you were to look at Bitcoin in isolation, then I certainly would be calling for Bitcoin going up to sixteen point five k. But the thing is, I look at correlating charts because that's how you get the better picture of what is actually going on in these markets. And when you pull in the stock markets and you pull in the top fifteen market caps, you get a much different picture. And that's where we'll talk about Bitcoin weakness. So as I say, if you look across the alts, and I, I, we won't have time for that in this video, we, we cover the alts in my group. Uh, details to that are in the description of this video. If you do want to join, we, we talk about Bitcoin on a weekly basis. Um, but yeah, we go through all the alts there and they've all looked to have completed these corrective moves to the upside. Okay, so that's the alts. Also, massive this is huge, obviously. Yeah, people say you shouldn't read too much into the news, but it's inevitable that this is going to impact on the stock markets. Yeah, we've got obviously coronavirus, and we've got the northern hemisphere now going into autumn or fall, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the winter months, the colder months are settling in, and it's going to lead to higher rates of coronavirus. Um, on top of that, you've got your U.S. election uncertainty. Yeah, uncertainty being the key word. Markets do not like uncertainty. Um, okay, so then we've got the daily S3, which we're currently finding a bit of resistance at. So let's go on the daily camera pivots, and you can see here we are at the S3 right here. So this is resistance, um, and I mentioned 11.1k was the invalidation for this move up. And this is where we're currently finding resistance. And we, in my group last week, we spoke about expecting price to run up to 11.1K before it came down. And that's exactly where we've come up to 11.1K to the dot after hitting 9833 to the dot. And I'm anticipating a further move down from here. Invalidation for the whole bearish move is 11.1K, to be honest. If it gets above here and uses 11.1K as support, then I'm happy to flip my bias to bullish once more, but I don't see it happening. And that will be explained very shortly when we look at the stock market. So there's the camera pivot on the daily. Um, so that was that. And then we've got the NASDAQ. So we're basically beneath the 20 day SMA on the, the NASDAQ. And we're also beneath the NASDAQ daily S4. That's the camera pivot. These are two very key parameters um, and yeah showing weakness on the Nasdaq here is where we discussed last week about the potential run-up we were seeing one hourly divergence down here uh, suggesting that we are going to see a bit of a bounce the upside of that bounce was deemed to be 11.1k where we have resistance um, the reason being is the daily s3 the camera pivot and it was also around the 0.618 
Fib retracement from this high to this low. Okay, so that's why we were calling 11.1. .1. And I see this opportunity as a very good shorting opportunity. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Bitcoin. As I say, long term targets, I see it coming down to 2K probably over the space of at least one year. Okay, that's the general outlook. Um, so I know people don't like to hear that, but I'm not just going to say I think Bitcoin's going up just so I can get more likes, more followers. That's not what I'm about. This channel has always been about telling it as it looks. And um, yeah, this is how it looks to me. Um, I see it coming down. Um, so next up, let's talk about NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, what we were looking at. Let me quickly, we'll have to run through this relatively quick because I know the video will drag on otherwise and probably people won't want to watch. Um, so I've got a potential five wave completion here with your wave one, two, three, running flat four, and that's our fifth that has gone vertical. It looks very squashed on the log scale. This is your linear scale here where you've got your one, two, three, running flat four, and there's your fifth. If we zoom in on the fifth, we'll break that one down as well. So we were looking at it as a one, two, three, running flat four, and then we're going to an extended fifth. So whenever you get these parabolic moves, always expect these uh, extended fifths. So you, in, in the fifth, you've got a one, two, three, four, and five up to here. I, I think again, we've got this shorter time frame fifth wave count there. So we've got a one, two, three, four, extended fifth up to here. There was a reason for looking at this uh, high, there are FIB projections. We've got the 2.618 FIB projection of this wave four here. Yeah, hitting our 2.618 very, very nicely. And then if we zoom out and go on the daily, if you do the same thing for this retracement here, again, you've got that kind of play out right there. So you've got the 1.618 getting hit to the T. Okay, now if we zoom in, looking at the shorter time frame price action here, it's gone the, let's go all the way down to at least the hourly to look at this. The way I've been looking at it, it is an ugly count, I must admit. Uh, but I was looking at it as a one, two, three, four, and then the fifth looks like an ending diagonal to me at the moment. So a one, two, three, four, and five. Then we go into a flat pattern, stands out to me as a flat, an A, B, C. And then you can argue we're going into a wave three. And this level was a significant level. It was our 11K level. It's an ODB, so it's the oldest daily block, um, which we were looking at based on this candle close up here, bringing it across. It acted as great support for all of these wicks and eventually broke. Yes, we're seeing a bit of bounce and we want to see how it reacts here. Do, will this be another great shorting opportunity from here, a retest of this level? Or... Are we going to come up and now use it as support? You know, was it a swing failure or and allowing price to come back up? Or is this level now going to act as resistance? This is a key bit of information that we're yet to find out. Because as I say, a NASDAQ recovery, a NASDAQ recovery to the upside could potentially mark uh, a recovery in Bitcoin, allowing it to go to 16.5K. I don't see it happening, but it, this is technical analysis and you've got to have your invalidation points and you've got to entertain both sides of the argument so that's pretty much it for nasdaq let's have a quick look at apple and amazon so if we take a look at apple zooming out let's go on the weekly i think for this one so we were looking at it all the way for following our tech boom here we had a wave one two three four and fifth yes it's distorted it's on the log scale here's your linear one two three four and you can see the fifth a bit more clean here so you had a one two three four and that's your fifth from there. If we break down the wave five, you've got a one, two, three, four, five. And then we've drawn a pitchfork for this final leg up. Yeah, and if we go on the log scale, it was following this pitchfork really, really nicely, actually. Stayed within it all the way, and then we've broken it. For me, this was a, one of the first signs that we're seeing weakness here in the stocks. Okay, so that's one sign. Very concerning to see this terminal wave five breaking out of its upward trend. And you'll see the same thing on Amazon. Again, this is our terminal wave five that we're seeing here, and it's broken out of the pitchfork. Looks pretty, pretty concerning to me, I must say. Now, again, zooming out on the weekly, just to take, at the long, take a look at the long-term outlook on Amazon. <clears throat> so we're looking at it as a major wave one, two, three up to here, four, and then that's your fifth. 
again obviously very ugly and squashed on the linear scale this is the log scale one two three up to here so your third is extended made up of a one two three four and five that's your running flat abc then we go vertical for our parabolic fifth uh, and you can see you've made a one two three four five that was the pitch for, for our terminal fifth which is broken to the downside that is the concern that i have here on stock so that's apple and amazon and i'm showing you here how we've got a five wave count to the upside now just to give the bigger picture if we pull up the dow just because we have more historic price action on the dow if we pull up the log so it's following this really nice pitch for this is following our 1929 um, great depression and i have it as being a wave one two sorry let me just remember now yeah wave one two three four five yeah so this was your uh your 60s 70s uh stagflationary period and yeah that's it so i've numbered the the final wave the fifth wave which i've given it a wave one two three four yeah so that was your post tech boom initial pullback then we have our financial crisis so that was the final bit of the wave four then we got up in the fifth and you can see how overstretched we are in this pitch for we're at the 1.5 line here yeah and we've tagged it very nicely uh, we came down to the 0 0.5 and I see us finding weakness here yeah another Elliott wave count I want you to be aware of if we just quickly pull up this is historic price action we're on the log scale this is going back to the history of stock markets in the US so all the way as far as well they started out at 1792 so I have it as a wave one up to here a two three up to our Great Depression four is the Great Depression and then again that's your wave one two three uh three four and then from here you've got your fifth which is a wave one two three here's your fourth finishing with the uh, financial crisis and the fifth is cut short yeah this is an old chart so we, we we end it early this is up to 2013 yeah so we have to look at our trading view for the rest of it okay so that's putting it all into perspective can you see how we're potentially ending a super cycle here so that's what I'm concerned about. We are entering unprecedented times where interest rates are at zero. We've had a, a very, it's been, what is it, 12 years since our last uh, recession. Yeah, and we've got this pandemic that the whole world is dealing with now with very pe few people with savings in their accounts. Um, so those are the concerns that I have with the stock markets. That's why I think we might be starting to see things sell off. I've mentioned the invalidation levels. That's NASDAQ getting back above 11K. That's Bitcoin using 11.1K as support. Um, that would be a suggestion that it could go to 16.5. But at the moment, for the reasons I've mentioned, I'm very, very concerned about stock markets and in particular crypto for all of those reasons. So hope that has been of use. Um, feel free to leave your comments. Leave a like if you have found value. I know there will be people upset about any bearish suggestion about Bitcoin. But as I say, I'm going to tell it as it is. So if that's what you want me to do, leave a like. Um, I will let you know I am releasing two videos tomorrow. A lot of people have been asking what trading platform do I use to trade? So I use um, a particular platform which will be revealed tomorrow. Um, I've used several different platforms in the past. I'm very happily settled on the platform that I'm using now. So I, the video basically explains why I, uh, how I, ch how to choose a broker and why I've chosen the particular broker that I use. Um, it is a CFD and spread betting account, so it won't be accessible to everyone. For example, spread betting is only for UK and Ireland. CFDs aren't allowed, aren't permitted in every jurisdiction. Sadly, it's not permitted in the US. So that does leave out a large portion of my audience, I know, but it's the platform that I use. People have asked me to talk about it. So I am going to do a video on that. That'll be released tomorrow. So you can look out for that one. But let's see what happens in the markets. As I say, this could be very concerning times. We're going to see how it plays out very, very soon. Very exciting times. All right, guys, until next time, take care.